Okay. Yeah. Can you? Hopefully it works. Okay. Um, yes, I want, I want to talk about the uh, about DFID and CASH and the Humanitarian Emergencies Response Review, which, which is really forming our policy at the moment in, in emergencies. And this is the quick onset and slow, slow onset chron chronic context. Um, before I do that, I just want to say I passed this review to a number of people in, in DFID who are interested in CASH and incredibly positive responses. Best GPR ever read was one comment. I'll give you names later, Paul. Yes, please. Uh, we want that for our impact uh, <laughs> log, yes. And, and the best compendium on cash transfers in emergencies. The timing for us is absolutely brilliant because we've been talking about doing something extremely similar, a sort of scoping of what's out there, very much for how we're going to take this forward. And we, we, we sort of feel at the moment that we don't need to do that. We, we can use this as our key document for future work. Um, I'll recommend at the end a few areas where I think we need to dig down a bit, where we need to go into a little bit more, more detail from our point, from our point of view. Um, the HER itself, which is an independent uh, uh, review uh, looking at DFID, um, big headline was resilience, which took us all a little bit by surprise because it was meant to be looking at you know, your sort of quick onset emergencies. And it was talking a lot about building resilience of communities. They were the first ones to respond wh 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 when, when an earthquake happens or a tsunami happens or in a drought, and national government's responsibility towards that. Um, attached to resilience was anticipation and innovation. Now, uh, in the chapter on, on innovation, uh, there are about 40 recommendations at the, at the back of the HER. And in our response to the HER, we have rejected some of those. But within innovation, it made um, a, a few uh, recommendations around satellite technology, which I think was rejected. But there's a very strong recommendation number 12, which is clear, work with partners to ensure cash-based responses are given full consideration and, where appropriate, become much more wi widely adopted. So, so not questioning cash at all, but you know, accepting cash <coughs> and trying to mainstream it into more of, should it be shelter, should it be food, should it be cash? And I think what it's trying to say is that it needs to be systematized, and I think that's the seventh challenge, if you like, systematizing cash use within, within donors, within NGOs, within implementers, and within governments. So cash comes up in our chapter on innovation, and, and it's the, the, the actual policy recommendation is use innovative techniques and technologies in humanitarian response, e.g. cash transfers. I don't think it matters where it's highlighted. Um, we've formed an innovations team, which I'm a part of, and Joanna McRae is actually leading, and we're trying to sort out what to do, but, but cash will be a part of it. Um, in resilience, um, I think that there needs to be more use of cash evidence. Um, I think there needs to be more sort of evidence shown that it's good and better than, others, um, than other transfers at building resilience. I think that relates to timing and, 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 and a lot of other <laughs> things as well. Um, and the we will in, on the resilience side, which I think is very relevant to cash, is humanitarian and development investments are better linked in fragile and conflict-affected contexts. And I think that cash as, a, as an instrument is something that, that, can, that can make those linkages. Um, something else we're being very pushed on with the new government, which I'm sure you're all aware of, is, is the accountability and impact elements of our work and trying to, trying to demonstrate <coughs> good impacts in all of our programming, but in, in humanitarian response, we're finding this most difficult because I think there's the least evidence. Um, so what I would like to try and dig down on with, with the cash transfer story is the cost benefits of cash versus other things. Um, value for money is what we're being talked about, is what, it, is what we're being talked to about a lot by, by the Minister, demonstrating value for money. So cash versus other stuff, what, what, what are the benefits, what aren't. And within all of this, we're being very challenged to bring evidence and, 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 and making the case. Um, the chapter on partnerships, uh, bolded, is that we need to engage and work more strategically with ECHO on my left. Um, and this is on policy and operational areas, and it's talking about areas such as innovation and resilience. And I think that of the donors, ECHO are probably more advanced in having those sort of systematic reviews and programs and guidance and guidelines. 
which you know the member states did feed into, and I fed into the 2009 one. So 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 we we do quite often sort of pull that out as as you know something something that we're very much in in, in agreement with. Um, delivering transformational change in DFID is 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 probably the longest chapter, and a lot of it is inward looking to us and what we should be doing um, in in humanitarian response. And we are at the moment um, developing a humanitarian policy note, which is going to give further analysis to the protracted and slow onset crises, which I think is an area where, where cash does, does have a very big story. Um, I think what I was going to say is, is, is that within the note, I mean, I think that there are various types of humanitarian response, and I think we're better at doing cash in some areas than others. And I think that where we are weakest is in the first instances of the sort of big ones, you know, you know, the sort of the Pakistans, the Haiti. I, I, I think that, you know, if we can actually get it systematic at the moment in the Horn of Africa, food's going in, not cash. You know, mm. at what point can we be where we can actually say we've written out a check to do cash transfers in the first few first few days or, or week week of an emergency. Um, some things that um problematic for DFID, um, tracking and monitoring cash transfer programs. We don't have any sector codes for cash. We have sector codes for food, for shelter, for WhatsApp. Very, very difficult for me to actually go to our statisticians and say, could you please give me a snazzy bar chart for this presentation on how much of our work is in cash. The only way we can produce that is going through it project by project. Um, in our first Pakistan response, our first big emergency response, we spent 137 million pounds um, there were three projects that had cash transfers written within the descriptions um, of a total amount of nine million pounds, and so I reckon probably three to four percent of our response actually went on cash transfers in, in Pakistan. Post response, um, as we're sort of building back, I, I would say it gets bigger. Um, so we need to set up systems to be able to track, track and monitor cash transfers, and I think within the OECD that's an important thing as well. Um, the story about cash transfers and value for money I've, I've mentioned in the HER, and I think that there is work to be done on the role of cash in building resilience and in disaster risk reduction, and I don't know how much evidence that there is on that, but we see it as a very useful way of joining up our short-term and our long-term programming so instead of going from food to cash, and you're joining up your systems as well. So where you've got safety nets, you can expand them or you can deepen them. And I think there needs to be more work done on that. And I would also like to challenge some of the slo sloppy messaging that happens about cash for work programs, RDRR, because they build resilience to disaster. Because I, I just think there is so much bad practice out there that very often you're actually undermining people's resilience and undermining what you're meant to be doing.